guys, Mr. Klein here, Chapter 11, Lesson 2, the Paleozoic Era. Let's go ahead and get started. Yes, we will talk about this fearsome fish in a moment. Uh, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to answer the following questions. What major geologic events occurred during the Paleozoic Era? And what fossil evidence, what does fossil evidence rather reveal about the Paleozoic Era? Well, let's get started and let's talk about where we're talking about the Paleozoic Era. Here's our geologic timeline. In our last lesson, lesson one, you remember Precambrian time, which involved three different eons. We had the Hadean Eon, that's essentially where the Earth was formed. And the Hadean Eon pretty much marks where we find the first rocks. The Archean time is where we find the first signs of life. And the Proto-Aerozoic Era is where we see life take hold. And so what we're talking about is this, this dark green area right here. This is the Phanerozoic era, which eon rather, which is where we live in now. And we're talking about the Paleozoic era. And within it, we have the Cambrian period, the Orovician, the Silurian, the Vonian, the Carboniferous, which in the United States is sometimes divided between Mississippian and Pennsylvania periods, and the Permian period. So essentially, with the explosion of life about 540 million years ago to the introduction of dinosaurs at 250 million years ago is the time we're talking about. So let's get going in our notes. Now, the oldest era, the Phanerozoic era, as we just saw, was the Paleozoic Era. So we're going to be talking about today. After that, the Middle Era, the Era of Dinosaurs, is the Mesozoic Era. And the youngest era is what we call the Cenozoic Era. The Cenozoic Era is the era that we live in. And so we'll get through these as we go through the chapter. So what happened in the Paleozoic Era? Well, organisms from the pale early Paleozoic were invertebrates that lived in the oceans, essentially. These animals have no backbones. What essentially happened was uh, once the Cambrian uh, period kicked off, there was an explosion, absolute explosion in the fossil record. We went pretty much from nothing to fossils everywhere, all over the place in the Cambrian period, all across the fossil record. So this is what we call the Cambrian explosion, when life really took hold on the planet. And the first uh, organisms were animals, and they were considered in, uh, invertebrates because they had no backbones. In fact, the, if you look at this picture, and by the way, most of these pictures come from the new paleontology exhibit at the Houston Museum of Natural History. Absolutely fantastic. I would go so far as saying is after the Smithsonian, the American Museum of Natural History in New York, and the Field Museum in Chicago, this is the best paleontology uh, exhibit I have seen. So here we go. Here's some early in, uh, invertebrates, okay? Uh, jellyfish, about 500 million years old. There they are in the fossils. All these individual things are small jellyfish. And what ended up evolving after then was what we call trilobites. Trilobites are the most common fossil that we find. They're essentially like horseshoe crabs, so we would consider them almost kind of like crustaceans kind of today, but they had all of these shapes and sizes. Some of them were big, some of them were really little, some of them were even fossilized as they were moving along in the rock. But we find them all over the place during the Paleozoic era. So you had those evolved from those simple jellyfish that had no exoskeletons at all to trilobites that had exoskeletons. Now, the planet was a lot different back then, especially the shapes of the continents. Shapes of the continents were far different than they were today. Uh, this is the late Cambrian period, about 514 million years ago. If you look at this map, uh, Alaska's here. We're actually, Louisiana's actually somewhere way down here. Okay, so obviously we've moved around over the past 500 million years. A uh, piece of Siberia, okay, right here. Uh, and here's part of Europe, right here too. And so most of the land was covered, uh, most of the earth was covered in water, and most of the land was put down b down by the globe, uh, by the poles, particularly the South Pole. And so because the continents were indifferent, uh, and the atmosphere was still different because plants hadn't really taken hold. Earth's climate was very warm. It was full of a lot of carbon dioxide, especially from the earlier eon, from the uh, from the earlier eons where you had a lot, of, a lot of volcanic eruptions and you had a lot of carbon dioxide in the world. Because at the time there were no plants in order to put real plants apart from slimy algae and things like that to photosynthesize to really dump oxygen into uh, the atmosphere and really change it. However, the water was oxygen rich which allowed organisms to go through cellular respiration and stuff like that. Now, 
what ha would happen over time is climate change and uh, boom in the continents would happen and oceans would flood the continents forming shallow inland seas kind of like the Mediterranean uh, Sea where, uh, or even the Gulf of Mexico where we're at in Louisiana where Vermilion Bay is only like 8 to 10 feet deep well not quite that shallow but once you get out into the Gulf gets a couple hundred feet deep you would have a lot of that now uh, during the early Paleozoic era, the land mass that would become North America was near the equator. Okay, so its climate was a lot different than what it was, what it is now. As you can see, it's right here, actually Canada, and that is Hudson Bay right there. Canada was, and part of Greenland was essentially on the equator. Obviously, they wish they were that warm these days. So obviously, the continents and stuff have changed over time. So as we move out of as we move out of the early Paleozoic eras, we move into the Silurian and Devonian era. So we've already had the uh, Cambrian explosion, and so we're moving into the middle periods of the Paleozoic era. Now, although the early Paleozoic era ended with a mass extinction, uh, many invertebrates survived mainly in the water. And as a result of this, you started seeing evolutionary trends that culminated with animals with backbones or vertebrates evolving. So the vertebrates evolved pretty much during the beginning of the Silurian period, and they began going from there. Some of the earliest vertebrates were fishes, okay? And in addition, insects evolved, and also Earth's first plants appeared, and they, they started in the water and migrated to land. Now, the Middle Paleozoic eras, the Silurian and Devonian eras, are what we call the uh, eras of fishes. Okay, this is the time, age of fishes. And we had fish all over the place. For example, we, here's, a, here's a fossil of a fish. As you can see, the fish uh, doesn't quite look like what it does today because the tail is really fin-lobed. It's, it's kind of spread out more than you would see most modern fish. And we have the introduction of a living fossil, what we call a coelacanth. A coelacanth evolved mm, 350, 400 million years ago. And uh, it's a lobe fin fish, as you can see like that. Uh, and we, it lasted pretty much in the fossil record until 65 million years ago at the end of the Cretacean peri Cretaceous period in a dinosaurs and it was gone. Scientists thought they were extinct until 1938. 1938, okay, so from 65 million years ago to 1938, we thought they were gone. And in 1938, one was discovered in uh, South Africa. It was caught. Uh, by fishermen and trawler, or scientists looks at it and says, hey, hang on, what's this? It's a coelacanth, and it's a living fossil, and since then we've caught more living examples of it. Uh, so this type of life, this, uh, this model that you see at the Houston Museum of Natural Science uh, is based on not just the fossils that they found, but also the living specimens. And the most famous fish of the Devonian period is the Dunkleostesis. That's that giant fish skull you see right here at the beginning of the lesson. Uh, it, was a 30 me it was a 10 meter long or 30 foot long fish with an armored skull and armored jaws. And it would essentially snap whatever it uh, came across in half, especially in vertebrates with really tough exoskeletons. Uh, so not exactly the kind of thing you'd want to get on the end of your line when you're out fishing in the Gulf. Okay. And in addition to this, geologically, uh, at this time, we had major collisions between the continents. Some of these collisions form one of the oldest land masses we see in North America, geologic features rather. It's actually the Appalachian Mountains were formed at this time. Uh, at their height, the Appalachian Mountains were probably about as tall as the Himalayas, so about you know, 26, 27,000 feet above sea level. But over the hundreds of millions of years since then, the Appalachians have eroded now down to where they're the highest point is at uh, Mount Mitchell in North Carolina. It's about mm, 83, 8,400 uh, feet above sea level. Now, so this is what it looked like in the early Devonian period, okay? Uh, Louisiana, we're still way down here. Uh, Cuba's down here by us. This is where we are. We're in the Rheic Ocean, so we were still underwater. Uh, there's that Laurentian Basin. That's where you see the... Uh, that's where you see the land near the equator. Okay, you see the northern Appalachian Mountains forming. And you're starting to see the continents start to come together, uh, which leads us into the late Paleozoic uh, 
era, which is the Carboniferous and the Permian periods. Now, in the United States, based on rock formations we saw in the early 20th century, we divided the Carboniferous periods into two periods. One was the Pennsylvanian period, and the other one was the Mississippian period. Now, when we talk about the Mississippian period, we're not talking about uh, Mississippi, as in the state next to Louisiana. Rather, we're talking about the rocks we find in the upper Mississippi Valley that had fossils. And... The Middle Paleozoic era ended in a mass extinction event, most probably from uh, a meteor or volcanic eruptions. Now, as a result, many marine or ocean invertebrates, but some land animals disappeared, which lends to the idea that it might not have been, might not have been a volcanic eruption, but rather uh, a meteor hit in the ocean. Now, from here, Fish-like organisms evolved into organisms that had full-blown lungs that could breathe air. And once you had organisms that could breathe air, okay, because of plants growing, especially in the, uh, especially during the Carboniferous era, okay, that's where plants really took hold all over the place. They exploded all over those land masses, which we'll see in a second. They, all the photosynthesis was pumping out more and more oxygen, so that allowed organisms that could breathe oxygen without having to go through gills and water could get onto land. Now, these first organisms were what we call amphibians. Yeah, like frogs, toads, salamanders, things like that. Okay, these amphibians were the first land organisms. Okay, so they got out of the water and got on land, but they would still have to return to the water in order to lay eggs. And they had all sorts of really weird shapes. Uh, for example, here's one right here. Okay, a boomerang habit amphibian. This was actually in the Permian period, but uh, during the Carboniferous period, you would see some of these. And then you would have some that were like huge frog-like organisms, like, you, like the museum you saw in Houston. It's about 20 feet long, a 20-foot long alligator-looking amphibian with really sharp teeth. Not exactly something you'd want to come across with in your backyard or something like that. But as the Paleozoic era moved on toward the end, especially in, well into the Permian period, we saw the introduction of reptiles. And by the end of the Paleozoic era, reptiles were the most complex life forms on Earth. Reptiles were the first animals that did not require water for reproduction. They were able to lay eggs. They were able to lay eggs on land. And as a result, uh, life forms didn't, ha uh, animals didn't have to stay close to the water. They could spread out and move from there. So by the end of the Paleozoic era, you started to see land life animals all over the land. Okay, and so from there, they started evolving and spreading out. Now, during the late Paleozoic period, tropical forests grew in swamps along in shallow inland seas. And when the plants died, they sank into swamps by what we call coal swamps. And that's where we get the Carboniferous uh, period. Carboniferous, carbon, uh, is actually where we find most of the coal that we've mined. Okay, it was actually in the Carboniferous period. Okay, so a coal swamp is an oxygen poor environment where over time plant material changes in the coal. Because there's a lack of oxygen, carbonization can take place and the plant matter can turn into coal. So in Wales, in Russia, in Pennsylvania, hence the name of the Pennsylvanian period, that's where we see a lot of fossils, especially fossils in coal areas. Okay, so let's look at some of the life during the Permian period. The Permian period is famous because in Texas, uh, West Texas, you have uh, the Permian Basin. And at the time, you had uh, where it's now a couple thousand feet above sea level, it was a shallow ocean. And as time went on, the, o the uplift went and the land came up and the water went away. And so you started to have reptiles like this, like this Demetrodon. This Demetrodon was first discovered around the Big Bend National Park. That's at Big Dip in Texas. Uh, and these survived into late into the uh, Permian period. And scientists hypothesized, and here's a model of what the Demetrodon might have looked like, that uh, the, the fin could have been used either for radiating heat, signaling a mate, or signaling danger, or something like that. Okay, so there's the example of it. And as you can see right here, the late Permian, that's this area right here, is the Permian Basin. That's where at in Texas, that's where a lot of these uh, 
Fossils are found once the oceans retreated, and also Permian fish were found there. There's like mountains where it's like six, seven thousand feet up in the air. Okay, you go about five thousand feet up near the top of the mountain, and then you'll see fish fossils. Okay, radically different than what it is now. So, by the end of the Permian period, he started seeing major geologic changes. For example, Earth's continents moved close together and formed a giant supercontinent. And if you remember our discussions on uh, plate tectonics and continental drift, uh, supercontinents is an ancient landmass that separated into the present day continents. And we know that this supercontinent that formed by the end of the Permian period was what we call Pangaea. Alfred Wegener and company, that's where they based their research on. Now, what happened to end the Paleozoic era? Well, scientists aren't quite sure, and they bicker and argue over it, but they do know this for certain, uh, that the largest known mass extinction event on Earth occurred at the end of the Paleozoic era. Essentially, over 5, 10 million years, over 90% of marine life forms, in other words, plants, animals, amphibians, you know, fungus, bacteria, all that. During this max extinction, 90% of marine or ocean-going life forms were killed, and 70% of all life on land became extinct also. So in a real short time, most of the organisms that lived on Earth that, that blossomed during the Cambrian explosion were wiped out. Now, some scientists will hypothesize several things. One, by a sudden climate change, uh, that the ocean currents might have changed, and as a result, life couldn't adapt fast enough, they died off. But most other scientists would uh, say that one of two things, either one, a large meteorite or large volcanic eruptions actually in Siberia, okay, in this area, the Siberian traps, where you find huge chunks of igneous rock all over the place, uh, where there were several, several, like tens and hundreds of volcanic eruptions throughout this period, completely and radically changed the climate over this time. And whenever we look at extinction events over time, we see this giant spike in the Phanerozoic era from the Cambrian period, okay, all the way through to right here. This is the end of the Paleozoic era. As you can see, uh, all of these organisms passed on and died. And as a result, the organisms that were left over had an entire planet to themselves for them to adapt to and take over. And that's what we're going to talk about in the Mesozoic era, how dinosaurs essentially took over after the Permian period ended. So let's wrap up this lesson. By the end of this lesson, you would have been able to answer the following questions. What major geologic events occurred during the Paleozoic era? Well, during the Paleozoic era, the continent shifted over time to form the supercontinent Pangaea by the end of the Permian period. In addition, during the Paleozoic era, here in the United States, the Appalachian Mountains were formed. Now, what does fossil evidence reveal about the Paleozoic era? Well, one, Life exploded during the Cambrian period. We went from essentially nothing to just life all over the place in an extremely short time and expanded with the introduction of animals and plants, culminating with the first reptiles during the Permian period. At the end of the Paleozoic era, over 90% of all known types of life died during the first great mass extinction. So that's your lesson, Paleozoic Era. Next time you come back, we will be talking about the Mesozoic Era, which is everybody's favorite era because it's the era of dinosaurs. So we'll go ahead and talk about that later. See you next time.